Hey everyone, it's Athene and welcome back to another video. Today I'm going to share with you how I created my very first Evolution costume based on Delightful's amazing designs. I've been wanting to do a set of Evolution costumes for quite a while, but I haven't really found the right time to start the project. For those of you who don't know, I live in Canada and in the winter time, while I live in a big city, for the most part, it, we don't get too much snow and it's not super cold, but like, it's always dark and cold and snowy and miserable. And I literally just want to hibernate for pretty much the entire winter season from like November to February, just full stop. <laughs> it's always so cold and dark. As I'm sure you can tell by the lack of crafting videos on my channel, not much has changed this year. Um, I did manage to get some inspiration though. In January, we got hit by a massive snowstorm and I was like, you know what? We're gonna have a whole lot of really nice crispy snow. Why not do a really cool snow photo shoot? And I thought this would be a great time to make a Glaceon cosplay. There are a lot of different ways that Glaceon can be represented as a costume, um, but I've been following Delightfully for a long time and I love her work so much. I thought, you know what, this is gonna be a great opportunity to actually start my series of illusions and I'm gonna bring all of her awesome designs to life and I'm gonna start with Glaceon. By the way, Catherine is super awesome and mad talented and if you haven't checked her out, you absolutely have to, like right now. Wait, no, not right now. Finish watching this video and then go check her out. I hit up Borda Style to find a dress whose silhouette matched what I was looking for. I picked out two patterns that I really liked, printed both of them out, and tried them out in muslin. Just as a note, Borda style patterns don't have seam allowance, so don't forget to add your seam allowance after you've printed it out. I generally use half an inch. quite sit the way I wanted it to on my body and it was also a little bit too small because it was an older pattern. Uh, it also just didn't have the silhouette, like Catherine's design had a really nice poofy skirt and while the pleats looked really nice at the front, they didn't quite capture that essence. The second pattern, however, was awesome. I really liked the designs on the bodice and the raglan sleeves. I know on Catherine's designs, it's just a simple white bodice, but on a doll, there's not much space to do anything interesting. On a human, there's a lot more space to do details. And I felt like the bodice needed a little bit of zhuzhing up to make it a little bit more interesting to match the skirt. I made a few modifications to the fit, like adjusting the sleeve length, adjusting the length of the bodice, and also taking out that weird bust dart. I just closed off the dart and redrafted the seam line there to account for the extra space. galaxy twill lying around in my closet that I wanted to use because I was hoping that this project would be a bit of a destash to my fabric collection but because it was a lighter weight twill you could see through it quite a bit I ended up using a simple white cotton as a lining to help the galaxy twill have a little bit of extra weight and to prevent it from being so see-through
Once I had all the pieces cut out, I finally got to use my brand new Janome serger. Those of you who watched my CNE vlog would know that I got this at the Canadian National Expo last year and haven't really used it since I unboxed it, but this was a great opportunity to really make the inside of my bodice look professional. Constructing the actual garment was pretty straightforward. I just followed the instructions that came with the downloaded pattern. The only thing that I did slightly differently was I gathered the ruffled bits for the shoulder by hand just because I prefer this method over using a machine. touch I decided to add some white cotton trim to the sleeves so that it kind of matched the cotton trim that I will end up using for the skirt. To make the skirt I just took all of my leftover white material, cut two giant rectangles, and sewed them together. The total length that I was looking for was roughly three times my bodice waist measure, and the width of the rectangle was about the length that I wanted from the bottom of my bodice to my knees. I ended up adding a little bit more just in case so I could trim it back up, because it's a lot easier to shorten a skirt than it is to lengthen a skirt. I made ruffles out of some really nice sheer material I had lying around. I just cut really long rectangles, finished the edges on my serger, and then just went at it with my ruffle foot. Catherine just used the selvage of her skirt fabric as her trip. That's not gonna really work on a human, and it kind of looks like ruffles from a distance, so that's why I decided to make ruffles for this. For the fur trim, I actually had the exact same kind of yarn that Catherine used to make her fur trim for her doll. I just had it in a slightly different color. I had a bluey green purple kind. So I ended up cutting large chunks of it off and then sewing it down to a ribbon so that I can sew that ribbon to my dress so that it was a little bit more manageable to make the same kind of fur trim look. all the edge trims in place and then I sewed the white cotton lace on top of the skirt as well. I found this lace at the dollar store so it was super cheap and it was really cool because it looks almost identical to the lace that Catherine used on her doll but just a lot bigger. To finish the neckline I just cut a long rectangle that matched the length of the neckline on the bodice, folded it in half and then sandwiched it between the facing and the actual bodice. This essentially made a collar that stuck up from the bodice. 
To make it lie flat, I cut an elastic that was shorter than the length of the collar and then sewed it through on one side and then gathered it all the way to the other. Then I finished off the whole dress with a little bow made out of rope that I had lying around. Now that I spent all this time making the dress, time to cover it up with a giant poncho. Originally I was hoping to use up some of my minky for this poncho because I just want to de-stash some of it, but I just don't have enough pieces of one solid color to make it. And I didn't really want to spend more money on fabric because it's quite a bit of fabric that I needed, so to Amazon for some creative solutions. I was originally just searching for some light blue fleece fabric or something like that, but then I came across this listing for a spa blue blanket. <laughs> the image looked like it was the perfect color. It was this beautiful light blue and it had a bit of a cream on the back side of it. So it was double sided, so I didn't have to line it. And it was a king size blanket. That should be tons of fabric to make a poncho. It was only 30 bucks, so I figured, okay, let's go. When it arrived, I was definitely disappointed. It ended up being a dull blue gray color and the lining was actually brown instead of cream. Not exactly what I'd call spa blue. But I figured, you know what, let's just roll with it. The poncho was super simple to make. I literally just needed to cut a giant circle from my blanket. I folded it in half and then I folded it in half again to make a quarter and then just cut a semicircle out. I cut a hole in the middle for my head and then I cut some slits in for my arms and then I just finished the armholes a little bit nicer by folding over the extra fabric and doing a zigzag stitch. the front of the poncho and trimmed off some extra volume of fabric there because I didn't really want as much poof at the front and then I put a zipper in to get in and out of it. For the fur trim I used some white faux fun fur that I had lying around in my closet. I just folded it up and cut long strips of it. Normally I don't really recommend cutting long fur like this with just a rotary cutter because you're gonna get fluff everywhere and you're also not gonna get a very natural edge to the fur. But I was in a bit of a rush and I had a lot of strips to cut so I was like, you know what, it's fine. <laughs> We're gonna vacuum this problem after. caplet that went over the poncho, I kind of just fiddled with it until I got what I wanted in terms of shape. I basically just sewed three triangle pieces together and then adjusted the opening as I wanted it.
the ribbon detail, I measured out the spacing between the slits that the ribbon needed to weave in and out of, cut them into the fabric, and then weave the ribbon through. I also secured the ribbon in place with fabric glue so it looks perfect no matter how I walked in it. stretch now I just need to make all of the tiny details man this project ended up being a lot more complicated than I expected I made a paper template for the front flap and adjusted it to fit until I was happy I cut this template from some rolled up craft foam that I had and then painted it with a light blue acrylic once that was dry I covered it with a light grip spray adhesive and then glued on some transparent iridescent gift wrap designs on the front, I measured out where I wanted all of my white strips to go and used that as a template for applying the designs. I cut strips of white vinyl and then placed them as per my design. I glued iridescent half pearls in between the diamonds. Even though I measured everything pretty carefully and I planned out my whole design, I still ended up half an inch short. So the design's a little crooked, but it's okay. It still looks really nice and you only really notice if you take a really close look and count all the gems on it. For the rest of my accessories, I did end up using slightly more saturated colors of fabric to balance off with the weird bluey gray coat that I ended up with. I think together they all look really nice and they still follow in the vein of color scheme that Delightful had originally designed, so I think it still looks okay. The mittens I made by following a free pattern that I found online and I used just some of the minky that I had lying around in my closet. To decorate, I used white pom-poms. I modified my trusty pair of $5 Walmart punk boots that I got years ago. I covered the front laces with duct tape so they wouldn't show through on the fabric and then filled the gap by the heel with EVA foam to create a nice wedge. I used masking tape to take a new pattern of the wedge shape and cut out some craft foam to cover it all up so it looks nice and even. I 
masking tape method to create a pattern for the entire boot as well. I traced out those pieces onto my fabric, sewed it all up, and then glued it in place on the boot. I used foam clay to sculpt some of the claw details and the diamond details on the boot, and then once everything was dry, I painted it with acrylics and sealed it with Mod Podge. I just made a quick paper template again to try and figure out how they would look compared to my head and then just cut them all out of EVA foam. I cut two layers to give it a little bit of extra depth and then covered the whole thing with fabric. on it was actually a little bit tricky this wig is super crappy it was a really cheap $30 wig off Amazon I didn't really want to invest in a nice wig at, from Arda um, but it was really thin at the top and it didn't really matter because I have a hat on it but in order to keep these in place so as I'm walking around they don't wobble too much there's actually a piece of warbler that I formed over this particular head form um, it just goes from here to here uh, I can't really show you but it's basically just a strip like a large warbler headband that sits on my head and these were glued right into it through the wig wefts because there wasn't really all that much wig to begin with that was in the way anyway for the hat I didn't really record myself making the pattern because it was just basically a trial and error thing I made the entire hat from a pattern that I have in a craft book and then I tried it on and then just basically cut up where the ears had to fit through and then extended the, uh, the pieces to wrap up. You can see at the back here, I basically just extended these pieces out to cover it. So that way, if I need to take it off, I can take it off. And this slit here is basically just cut and folded under. So I basically just made a hat and cut it up to make it fit around the actual head. The ear flap things were the same process as always, cut a paper template, craft foam, and then cover it with fabric.
Finally for the tail, I just reused my front flap pattern and cut two pieces of craft foam. I sandwiched some aluminum armature wire between the two pieces along the edges so I could pose my tail when I needed it. the whole thing with fabric as usual and painted the end bit to match everything else. To make the tail wearable, I just hot glued some elastic to the edge of the tail and then I could tie it around my waist under my dress. Oh man, that was a lot of stuff. The costume actually looked really simple to begin with, but it just has all these tiny little details that made it actually a lot of fun to work on. And I think overall it looks really great. I'm super proud of how it turned out and I hope Catherine likes it too. comments below what your favorite delightful design is and which evolution you think I should tackle next. As always, I hope you found this video helpful and that it inspires you to create something amazing of your own. I'll see you next time.